Good morning, welcome to a video, my first video on YouTube. Um, I am a personal trainer, just qualified, and I'm going to use this first video as a bit of an opportunity just to intro to myself and give you a bit of insight as to who I am so that maybe you'll see if you want to follow along with this journey that I've taken to YouTube. At the minute, my plan is just to make some fitness content online. Um, and like I said, this first video will give you a bit of an insight as to who I am. If you're interested in seeing that, like, subscribe, come along for the journey, help me out, I suggest anything you want to see in the comments, and we'll take it from there. So this first video, we're going to talk through my experiences, and that's going to be broken down to three different stages, which was sort of my initial initiation into why I decided I need to go on a fitness journey. The second bit, which is sort of like the steps that I took to actually do something about my fitness. And then the third step, which is even after that second step, what did I do to further improve my fitness and physique? So let's jump into phase one. Um, essentially, that was the phase when I decided I was going to do something about my fitness, which happened in my early adulthood. But the story sort of starts around when I was 10 years old. So essentially, when I was in my early teens I wasn't eating particularly well, I ate a lot of food and a lot of the bad foods so a lot of takeaways, a lot of stuff that's oily, heavy, heavy in fat so had a lot of calories to it and meant that I just put on weight, put on weight very easily and because I was in my pre-teen era I was also quite short and so I was pretty much growing sideways. Um, but at that phase in my life, it was sort of a struggle for me to do anything about it. I just sort of went along with it. I'd been bullied throughout my primary school years anyway, so it was no different that sort of the bullying was where it was. Um, it didn't impact me as much as it could have if I'd not already been bullied. I was a nerd throughout all of primary school, um, and this is back in the day when nerds weren't cool. So absolutely ridicule for basically being who I was um, and that was a tough thing to deal with but at the same time it was it meant that I didn't really care about my fitness and I probably used food as a way to sort of deal with the fact that I was being bullied it was a good comfort and it meant that I could sort of eat away my problems and I now reflect on that and I'm like that wasn't a healthy way to deal with it um, there were better ways to do it but at the time, it definitely worked. It got me through. And I guess I am where I am today because of what I'd experienced in the past. It's worth mentioning as part of that as well, though, that I wasn't exactly an inactive kid. So I did a lot of rugby, uh, a lot of basketball, a lot of football. Um, it was just every other time that I wasn't doing those sports. I was pretty much doing a sedentary lifestyle. So I was playing video games. I was laying down in bed. I wasn't particularly doing any steps outside of what I was doing in the times that I was playing sport and so that was particularly bad for me actually putting on weight. The other point was obviously the diet was particularly bad so I'd be eating takeaways every week. Um, I'd be eating processed food otherwise so stuff that had already been like breaded, had other additives, I'd been extra salt, that sort of stuff. So when you put it all together, I've probably eaten too much of that processed stuff as well. So if you have a pack of chicken, you can probably have like half a pack of chicken for a standard kid. I would just eat the full pack of chicken, stick it in loads of wraps, um, add other stuff to it, like add loads of cheese, that sort of stuff, and make it way more unhealthy than it needed to be. But at the same time, like I said, it got me through and I obviously am where I am because of it. That's sort of what my early teen years were um, and then it sort of got to me when I was about 14, 15 years old so I grew a bit by then but equally was still the same size because I was just putting on more weight probably getting up to around 17 stone uh, towards my heaviest at that period and that was sort of a, a point where I was like I wasn't enjoying it anymore I was sort of um, in school I acknowledged the fact that I wanted to do something about it but really struggled with trying. Um, in this phase I did try and go to the gym. Um, I bought a local gym past near my school, 
tried to go after school, did some cardio on a machine and then just sort of left it. I didn't really feel like I was being fulfilled when I went. And it was a real struggle to actually get motivation to go. And obviously every time I went in the gym, I was like, everyone's staring at me, I'm huge. Why, why am I here? People don't think I belong in this space. And so it was a really uncomfortable space for me. But I mean, I reflect on that now, I'm gonna be like, those people probably weren't staring at me, and if they were, they're probably supportive of me being there. Um, but at the time, it was a really uncomfortable feeling, and obviously, it put me off going to the gym. Um, and from there, I sort of left that. I guess that was where that relationship ended. It was like a few months of just going to the gym for a bit, trying to do some cardio, trying to lose a bit of weight. Um, but it, it was ultimately unsuccessful. I did try and it just didn't work for me. So I completely understand when people say that the gym isn't, it didn't work, it doesn't work um, because that's how I felt in the moment. Um, but obviously I, I have learned to grow from there, but it took me a long time to get to that position and I acknowledge that. So I wouldn't expect anything different of other people um, sort of sharing that experience that it was tough for me as well. So then moved into sort of my early adulthood. So I moved off to uni. Um, so this was when I was 18, 19 years old. Moved off to uni and pretty much drank my budget at uni, um, which I wouldn't advise because it means that you've got no money left. But I mean, to be fair, what uni student does? Um, but to be fair, I really enjoyed my first year at uni, um, but because I was consuming alcohol that has a lot of calories in it and the rest of my diet was pretty much made up with the cheapest stuff I could find. So again, heavily processed, probably less takeaways, but the alcohol definitely made up for the lack of takeaway fat, bad food that I was not eating as much of um, and definitely still putting on weight during this period. Um, I've actually got a picture, so from that period, that was the first picture in the thumbnail and I'll put it on the screen here so you can see what I looked like at that time. So that was taken a few months after I'd started uni, so I was probably still 18 years old, just come back to meet some friends back at home. We had a picture together and then I look back at that picture and I'm like, well, that was a big point, but it was also a point when I was probably like, I need to do something about it. Um, definitely started to notice it more and I was like, a bit sluggish I wasn't really as active as I used to be when I was at home sort of at school I had societies and stuff to go to so I was like in basketball at school um, I played rugby and I used to always play football with my friends at home but then when I went to uni we still tried to play football uh, but we do five a side once a week when we could sometimes not get the numbers and so we end up doing less exercise I didn't get onto the basketball team so I was just sort of like Basketball stopped, rugby, I didn't even try to take up. I was like, I've got uni studies, I want to enjoy my uni year. So I didn't even try to get onto the rugby team. That was pretty much it. That was when I was like, yeah, this this isn't working. I need to do something about it. And so then we, we'd probably move into phase two. So phase two was sort of the phase when I was like, let's do something about this. Uh, so as I've mentioned before, 14, 15 year old, I did go to the gym, tried it out, and I was like, that that didn't work. Um, one of the major things that did change for me was I got my girlfriend when I was in my first year of uni, about halfway through my first year of uni. So my diet shifted quite heavily because we then start eating together. And when we ate together, I started eating smaller portions and just sort of eating the same way that she did for a lot of stuff. And so instantly just by making that small change, even drinking the alcohol at this point, even making the small change of just reducing my portion size to sort of be more in line with probably where I needed to be to lose weight, just lower the amount of calories I was taking in. Still got the same sort of expenditure, but at the end of the day, my calories came down. So I actually started to drop a bit of weight at that point. So it was basically saying, I didn't do anything gym wise. It was literally just chopping the diet and being like, let's align to what my girlfriend eats. 
it's probably not the best way to do it but at the end of the day it did do what i needed it to do which is sort of kick start that weight loss procedure where i was sort of like getting there i was acclimatizing to the new amount of calories that i had doing the amount of exercise that i need to do to actually change my physique drastically um it was good i enjoyed it obviously spending time with my girlfriend it meant that i was enjoying my life at the same time whilst i was losing weight so that was a really good incentive um obviously not everyone can get there but there's people along the way that can always support you i'd always advise trying to reach out to people that are around you because often they want to try and help you as much as they can because if there's somebody you sort of you you share a lot of your life with they'll often try and help and guide you in the right way even without actually meaning to they'll just sort of help out because that's sort of what we do as people um from there i guess i did sort of acknowledge the fact that i can't just rely on the diet to drop all of my weight and instead what i need to do is sort of add in some extra weight loss somewhere and I knew I didn't like the gym, but at the same time, I was like, people say it works. So let's do something and stick to it for a long time. So I decided to take up running. Um, and the approach that I took when I started was essentially I need to run 5k on the day that I go to the gym. So regardless of the amount of time it takes me whether i stop or start i would stay on that treadmill because i wasn't confident enough to go running outside in the real world i would stay on that treadmill because there's a treadmill inside of my girlfriend's place that she was staying at i would stay on that treadmill until i hit 5k and that would be a mixture of sort of running for a bit running being jogging so i'd jog for a bit i think i was generally hitting about 10 kilometer an hour pace um probably not even that to start off with sort of nine kilometers was probably where i was at it took me about half an hour to run 5k if i managed to run all the way through but a lot of times there'd be stop starts and sometimes you go faster sometimes you go slower but most of the time it was consistent i would do it for maybe three days a week and I'd continue to do that on a regular basis and just consistently go do that 5k and my goal was basically just to get the speed up of the 5k sort of get my pace better strive for something where I was like I feel quite comfortable and confident doing that run obviously my cardio system got a lot better by doing that and that was definitely moving in the right direction i started to see more weight loss again and at that time that was my pure focus right i just wanted to drop the weight as much as i could so i was still eating the same way my girlfriend was eating and now i've done this exercise to sort of also take off some more calories that i would normally have so now three days a week i'm running and i've got a lower calorie diet than i used to have so both those factors instantly mean that I'm sort of going to drop weight. Um, it wasn't drastic, like there's still alcohol intake, so there's still a decent amount of calories there. But it was definitely working. I could see results starting to happen. I could see my body changing and that gave me real motivation to continue, keep going. And it sort of drove me on through it, even if there's sort of days where I didn't want to go and do that 5 k when I'm like, but if I keep doing this consistently, I can see that results are happening. And so I'm going to keep doing it because that's what I want at the end of the day. I want to be there. That's where I want to be. Um, and I could definitely see it starting to do what I thought it would do. The only caveat that I would have to that is that obviously early on, 5K is a lot to do. You're basically getting up and you're saying to your body, let's do 5K. In the first few weeks, it was tough. Like you would get up and you'd be like i don't want to do that 5k i'm still aching from the last time i did the 5k it's very taxing on the body to be running that often 
um, and I wasn't recovering enough to really compensate doing it so I'd probably have taken it a bit slower to start off with just to sort of acclimatise my body to running maybe eventually I'd get to that distance but not jump straight in where I did before it meant that it sort of wasn't a sustainable way of doing it to start off with but my motivation was there which sort of drove me through it and eventually sort of my body caught up to me and allowed me to continue doing it even though I wasn't ready to start off with eventually I became ready to do it and so it, at the end of the day it did work out um I guess alongside that there were weights in the gym and I'd sort of just look at them and sort of throw them around a bit sometimes just do a like a chest press I'd seen that people obviously did a lot of chest press online um, and I was like well I mean people do it for a reason let's just grab some dumbbells get on a bench do a few sets of that and then that's it I wouldn't really be saying I'd particularly tax myself I would just sort of do it for the sake of it I wasn't really understanding why I would do it it was just there there was no plan so I did it um, it gave me I mean, I guess I felt good whilst doing it. I felt like it was doing something, but I didn't really understand why I was doing it. My goal was purely based on the cardio, and I was like, that's where I'm going to see the results. So the cardio was definitely my main focus in this phase. And it definitely had the results. Um, the second picture that I've got, and again, I'll put that up on the screen here for you to see. That was sort of taken um, through my, I think it was the other side of uni to be fair. So you're probably talking a two, three year span where I would sort of consistently run. And over that time building it up, sort of doing longer runs. So not only sticking at 5k, once I'd done the 5k, I was comfortable getting to at like 25 minute pace. I'd push it, I'd go to a 10k. And then I'd do that, continue doing that until my pace felt good at 10k and then keep pushing on from there. I mean, during my placement year, I I did a placement as part of my uni um, and essentially I worked in a normal job. But outside of my normal job, because I was away from my friends, I wasn't drinking as much and still eating the same way. And I was also running now and I was pretty comfortable running, so I started running outside doing 5k to 10k that was sort of when that happened I was losing a lot of weight over that period that one year was probably my biggest shift in weight but equally it meant that I was really small um, as you can see in the picture my arms are really small at that point I basically got down to a point where I was about 13% body fat according to the scales that I had um, so really skinny um, but absolutely no muscle because I put no focus, no emphasis on that as part of my training. It was purely focused on the running. I mean, I loved the running at this point. The running drive me and I was like, oh yeah, I'm going to run a half marathon. That's my goal. Um, and so that's sort of what I did. Um, drove all the way through that, continued doing that. And that was sort of all the way up until COVID. Um, where I actually did run my half marathon but there was also phase three sort of in, intermingled with phase two in that period but we'll talk about that when we get to phase three because that one's a bit strange. That phase sort of lasted about three four years um, so over that time just in summary essentially I dropped a lot of weight started looking a lot better I could run a long distance and do it quite comfortably my half marathon pace came out about two hours when i did it um and i was really happy with that uh, yeah, sort of that was the point where i was like maybe i don't want to continue running so much half marathon sort of felt like my cap i'd hit it and i was like yeah that that was enough taxing on my body and at this point i'm pretty slim I have no reason to sort of continue driving down to lower body fat percentages I was quite happy um, with how my body looked so I, I didn't feel the need to sort of continue running the way I did before and so that's where it sort of drove me into phase three which phase three was essentially me going I, okay I've got this really thin physique 
Um, it's definitely a lot better than it was before, but I don't want to be a twig, which at the time is how I looked at myself in the mirror. So even though now I'd sort of taken away that thought of, oh, you, you're really big, um, you've got a lot of weight, a lot of excess weight to you, I got down to the point now where I was really thin and I was like, I'm, I'm too thin, um, which is a weird juxtaposition in my head. Um, I want to put on some size. But for me, that phase was really tough because um, essentially every time I would see my scale sort of tick up, my brain would kick back in and be like, yeah, the scales just went back up. Um, you don't like the scales going up in that direction. So you should either be staying relatively flat or going down. That was pretty much at that point, my brain had been hardwired into you want to lose weight or you want to maintain the weight that you're currently at and I was doing a pretty good job at maintaining the weight I was at for the time that I was running but I wanted to build size and the only way I was going to build size was if I was sort of increasing my weight a bit because at that point it seemed impossible that I was going to increase it and I wanted to look bigger I guess um, so I needed to add weight but that meant that there were multiple times where I'd sort of try and start this phase, I'd try and get a bit of a plan together for what I'm going to do in the gym, and I'd ultimately do that plan, but not really give myself the fuel that I'd need to be able to actually see any benefit from doing it. So I'd be doing it, feeling really fatigued the next day because I've pushed myself really hard in the gym, and just not being able to recover in between um, because I'm literally not feeding myself any more than what I was when I was running which went off I was like oh yeah I, I do need to add more calories to my diet but at the same time I need a proper way to sort of track this and this is where sort of those body scales came in that I was like I'm gonna get a body fat percentage scale the body fat percentages i know they're not completely accurate but i could see the way that they were trending see whether i'm going up purely in fat whether there's muscle built there at all it was just a good way for me to track and it gave me some sort of way of saying oh yeah your weight's going up but it's going up for the right reasons and that drove me to be able to go yeah this is this is all right i'm allowed to gain weight now uh, it gave me that sort of confidence that i needed to be able to do it and so that sort of led me to where I am there were parts in there where I was potentially not pushing myself as much as I could have and I guess more recently I've been sort of trying to push myself as hard as I can and try and get that proper muscle growth that I desire um, I guess a lot of that has come from learning about being a personal trainer being able to understand the way that my body works to be able to actually make sure I'm hitting that progressive overload setting a realistic target for me to hit and know that things are moving in the right direction and right now I feel like confident that that is happening um, for example took a picture of myself the other day so as you can see this is the same shirt that I had in pitch two which I'll stick here just so you've got both comparison and in picture two you've obviously got very thin arms in picture three which is recently taken i have obviously filled out that shirt quite a bit now um and i'm quite a bit bigger that doesn't mean it was all muscle it wasn't i am quite happy with the fact that i have put on fat during that period but i've equally put on just as much muscle so i was really happy with the progress that i'd seen since that second phase photo and i mean between those two photos there's probably about two years of time but the last six months are probably where i've seen the majority of the muscle growth and that's purely because i've actually dedicated myself to sort of resistance training whilst doing a bit of cardio in there just to maintain my cardiovascular system i am purely focused on resistance training at the minute but i keep an eye on everything all at once just so i can have a more holistic view of everything there for that third stage it was tough um but i'm super happy where i'm at now and hopefully some people find this relatable um feel free to reach out to me in the comments if there's anything you want to ask 
happy to answer any questions in the comments and I will be keeping an eye out. Um, if you have any ideas for anything that you want to see in the future, please let me know in the comments. I'm more than happy to take on any advice or suggestions that you have for the channel, its direction going forward. Um, and thank you very much for watching. I appreciate this, obviously. It's a long time of me just sat here talking. So I appreciate that you stuck through to the end. And if you have stuck through to the end, maybe consider subscribing just so that you, you can see me in the next video. That's all from me. See you next time.